This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, how can I use Live Boolean to create a watertight mesh for 3D printing? So to start off, I just have ZBrush loaded up, and I have an example model file here loaded in that was created by Tomas Russell. He was nice enough to allow me to borrow his model for this Ask ZBrush video. So the question is asking about using the live Boolean system to create watertight meshes inside of ZBrush. So first I just wanna demonstrate how you may already be using ZBrush and say DynaMesh to generate a watertight mesh. So as an example here, I have Groot and I also have his base here and these are two separate subtools. So let's say I have this model, you know, good to go and then I decide I wanna add a base to it. So now I have these two separate subtools but they're just intersecting geometry right now. So I wanna take these two meshes and apply them together and generate one single watertight mesh. So you may be used to doing this with the DynaMesh process. So for this process, you navigate to the tool palette. You make sure you have your subtools visible that you want to merge together to create a single watertight mesh. Then you'd come down to the merge area here and you do a merge visible. This will now give you a new tool at the top. And then after you have this new tool at the top that now consists of those two separate parts, you now come through and DynaMesh this. So you go to the Geometry Palette, you'd open this up, you go to the DynaMesh area, type in say 512, turn off Blur, and then click DynaMesh. Now DynaMesh is going to look at your model and it's going to distribute even topology across the entire surface. And while it's doing this, if you have any interpenetrating geometry, it's gonna weld those pieces of geometry together, giving you a single watertight mesh. So if I take Groot now and say, just kind of hide part of him here, you can see that he has an entire inner cavity now. So he's a completely solid watertight model. Now, one thing when using the DynaMesh process, you'll notice that it is going to change the topology across the entire mesh. And depending on what your model looks like, you may reach a cap for DynaMesh. So you may have some details, like say with Groot here, that you're kind of losing or getting lost after performing this DynaMesh function. So this may not be what you want to happen. So at this stage, you can do a few things. You could have duplicated your model first. You then could have divided up the DynaMesh version of the model with traditional subdivisions and then project the details back from your high resolution model. But that also takes some time. So instead of doing that process, what we can do is we can use the live Boolean system in intersection mode to come through and just merge those two parts together, which is gonna give us that nice watertight mesh but it's not going to change any of our existing topology. So let's go back to our original Groot file here where we applied the DynaMesh. So this is the one with the two separate subtools here. And instead of merging these together and using that DynaMesh function, we're now going to activate Live Boolean. Now to activate the Live Boolean system, you just need to navigate to this Live Boolean button here and simply turn it on. And this will enable the Live Boolean. Now with Live Boolean active, I can come over to my subtool palette. I can set, say, one of my models as a start group by clicking this arrow icon here. And then any models that are underneath this start group till it comes to another start group will be processed with the Live Boolean preview. So as an example, with the base here, I can come over here and set this to now subtractive mode. And if I go to my Gizmo 3D and move this, you'll see that that base is going to be subtracted in real time out of my model. So this is a real-time preview of the Boolean process. So you can come through and manipulate your models and change things and see this Boolean effect happen on the fly. Now, the Boolean system is often used with this subtractive functionality. However, you can also use it with the intersection functionality, which is this one here. And when we use it with the intersection functionality, it's gonna work similar to how DynaMesh was doing when I merged the model and then re-DynaMeshed. So first going to look at Groot and process that model, then it's going to take the base and apply that to the model of Groot. And when it does this process, any areas where the intersection occurs, it's going to fuse those together and then create a seamless surface. So to process this, we now just select Groot, we can now go to the tool palette, we can come down here to the Boolean option under the subtool menu, and we can just simply click Make Boolean Mesh. And this is now going to process the start group we have here, so which is our Groot subtool, and the base subtool underneath it with the Live Boolean system. So just clicking this button, and you can see the Live Boolean was gonna process. And then at the top, we should have a new tool created. Now I can select that here, and you can see this is the resulting mesh we have. Now if I turn on my polyframes, you can see it still kept the polygrouping, so it kept the polygrouping for the base, 
and the polygrouping for Groot as well. But if I go down here to the polygroups area and open this up, and then now do an auto groups, this is going to look for any geometry islands in the mesh, and you can see that it is now one solid mesh. Now another thing nice about this live Boolean system is that the original file I had for Groot, if I come back to here and select this quick, and just go to solo, had some hollowing already done to it. Now when I use the DynaMesh functionality, if you had any inner areas that were generating kind of holes or hollowing effects, when you DynaMesh, it's going to remove those inner areas. One thing nice about the live Boolean system is that it's going to respect any hollowing you've already done. So if I go back to my Boolean version of Groot here, and now say append a cube here, and now I can use the live Boolean system to preview what a slicer would do for this model for 3D printing. So I can set the start group for the top subtool here. For the cube, I can set this to subtractive and then activate that. I'm going to turn off solo here. I'm going to turn off my polyframes and then switch to the Gizmo 3D. And so now I can move this cube and as I go across the model, I'm gonna be able to see that shell. So you can see it's kept that internal shell from the original file and it's still welded correctly to the base. So I've just used the live Boolean system to merge these two models together to give me a nice watertight mesh and it's also retained that inner structure. Now, if you wanna get rid of the inner structure, so let's say you had Groot already carved out and then you attached the base to him, but now you don't need that inner hollowing anymore. After you do the live Boolean process and we did that auto groups function, we now should have that separate area inside of group as its own polygroup. So if I hold down control and shift to get the select rectangle brush and then click on Groot and then click on Groot one more time, you can see this is the inner area or that inner geometry for Groot here that's creating the hollowing. So I can just show this and then flip the visibility by holding control and shift with the select rectangle brush and just dragging out on a blank spot on my canvas. And now I should only have the outer shell visible. Now I can go to the tool palette and go to the geometry area, open this up and go to modify topology and I can now do a delete hidden and that will now remove that inner hollowing and now I should have a completely solid model. So I can go test this again by using the live Boolean system with this cube. So I can just select that cube quick, turn off my polyframes, go back to the Gizmo 3D, and then move this, and you'll see it's cutting back into that model again to show me a slicing effect here. And as you can see, I no longer have that hollow area inside of Groot. So he's entirely solid now. So at this stage, I can export him out for 3D printing. Now, as in another example, let's say you've already gone and taken your model and you've already merged it together. So here I have another example file here. This is just a truck model here that was created inside of ZBrush. And let's say I've already gone through and merged all my subtools together. So if I turn on my polyframes, you can see that this model consists of multiple parts and they're all kind of intersecting. So instead of multiple subtools, I have a single subtool with multiple parts. And I want to take this subtool now and generate one single watertight mesh. So removing all those intersections. So if you've already gone through and merged it together, you may have a bunch of parts on this, you don't really want to split them back out to do the live Boolean process. So what you can do is you can just append another subtool. So I can come to the subtool palette here and go to append and click this. And I'm just going to append in another cube here. And I'm going to select this cube. And I'm going to move this off to the side and then scale this down just a little bit. And the key here is that we just need another subtool so that we can process our mesh with live Boolean. So the Boolean process does require more than one subtool. So by creating a cube subtool and now placing it off in space, and then coming over here and setting our truck as a start group, when we process with the live Boolean system, it's going to look at this model here and any intersecting geometry on this mesh is going to get welded together as well. And then it's gonna take the cube and attach that. So it's going to do the intersection process on any tool that you have in your scene. So if you already had a tool that's already merged together or maybe partially welded, you can use this to come through and finalize all the welding in there and get that solid mesh. So with the truck selected here and a cube that's just floating out in space set to the intersection mode, now go to the Boolean area under the subtool palette. I'm going to click Make Boolean Mesh. This is now going to process the model with the live Boolean system here. And it's going to give me a new tool out of this. And after that's complete, we can just go back up here to the top and I should have a new mesh created. So here's our new mesh here. So you can see it's gone through and kept all the polygroups I had on the original model. But if I go down to the bottom of the tool palette and go to the polygroups area and do an auto groups, 
you're gonna see that I only have two polygroups now. So I have the truck and I have the cube. So I just appended this cube so I could use the Boolean process to make the mesh I already had merged together watertight. So I can now remove this cube. So I can hold Control and Shift and select it, and then Control and Shift and click it again to hide it. And then go back to the Geometry Tool Modify Topology Area and do a Delete Hidden, which is now gonna remove that cube. And now I should have the truck here as a single watertight mesh. So to test it again, I can use the Live Boolean system one more time. I can append in another cube object, set that cube object to subtractive, make sure my truck is a start group, turn off my polyframes, and now go to the Gizmo 3D, make sure I have that cube selected. I can move this up and then say scale it out. And now I can drag this through the model to get that slice effect. So now I've just gone through and taken all those intersecting parts that this subtool had and welded them all together to get me a nice watertight mesh. And as you can see, all the details were held because the live Boolean system is only going to modify topology at the transitional areas. So if I turn on the polyframes here with the line, you can see all my original topology has held and stayed the same. So another nice workflow for using the live Boolean system to take models and turn them watertight and also hold all the existing topology you have on your models. So if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.